So here is our engineered table trying to add powers of 3 from the previous video. Uh, now we need to write a program to do just that. We've designated EAX to keep track of the base value down here, the 3's. EBX will track the current power that we're on, so 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. ECX will track the total. Alright, so that's 0 plus 3 is 3, and 3 plus 9 is 12, and 12 plus 27 is 39, and 39 plus 81 is so on and so forth. So where are the repetitious instructions? If I told you to write this table out to 3 to the 100 instead of 3 to the 5, you would see an obvious amount of repetition, and I'm hoping here that 3 to the 5 is enough repetition for you. What are the things we have to do repeatedly? All right, well, first thing we need to do is take this and multiply it by 3. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. All right, do you see the pattern there? And then this, we need to say, add EBX, add EBX, add EBX, add EBX. And hopefully we multiply by 3 before we add EBX. All right, and when do we stop? Well, we're going to stop when the, uh, well, at least in the case with my son, I'll show you a little bit better way of doing it, but, but for now with my son, we said, well, let's stop when we, when we hit uh, 243, when our power gets to 243. That's our stopping condition, because we know 243 is 3 to the 5th. All right, so we, we know we're going to have to do a loop, which we need to put a label. I'll just put again. You know, I can call it whatever I want to. It's my label. But this is the point where we're going to go back to. But before we do that, we need to initialize these registers right here, EAX, EBX, ECX. So EAX, well, it's going to track the base, and the base is the same every iteration. It's 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So that's not going to change. So move into EAX, the value 3. Uh, what do we want to start our power out to be? Well, we multiply by 3, then we multiply by 3, then we multiply by 3. So I haven't really diagrammed it here, but let me just try to do so. Uh, I have this 0 here. We're going to start out at 0. And our power, well, let's just say we're going to start at 1, because we want to take 1 and multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. And then this is constant. It's always 3. In fact, we'll say 3 to the 0, if you would. But our base is always 3, so that doesn't change. So moving to EAX, the value 3. And then let's initialize EBX, move into EBX, the value 1, and move into ECX, the value 0. Now I'll tell you a little hint, and I probably shouldn't do it in this video, but I will. If you look at the binary videos playlist, I believe I cover XOR in there, the XOR operation. And we can use XOR to zero out a register, uh, and it's a little bit faster than having to do a move into it. So let's just say XOR... ECX with ECX, and that will literally zero out the ECX register. If, uh, I'll leave it to you as an exercise to go look at the XOR uh, videos to see how that works and work a few out by hand. So we've done our initial initialization, and, and if you've done any high-level programming, you know that we generally always have an initialization. So there you go, initialization. Now, what's the repetition? Well, first of all, we need to take this 1, and how do we change it to a 3? Right, you could add 2, right? But that's not what we're doing. We're, we're changing it to a 3, and then we change it to a 9. Well, I already said multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. So let's multiply EBX by where is our base? Our base is an EAX, so we'll put that there. And then after we do that, we need to add the current value of our power to our total which we're storing in ECX here. We zeroed out ECX. So add ECX, the value that is stored in the power, which is EBX. Okay? And then all we need to do is do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And when do we stop? When do we stop? Well, I already said we're going to stop when our power reaches 243. Our power is represented by EBX, so let's just do that. We're going to say compare EBX to 243. That's a decimal value, not a hex value. Jump less than, as long as our power is less than that. So 139, 27, 81. Uh, not 243. As long as we're less than 243, we want to continue. So jump less than, again, back up to this 
this layer right there. So let me uh, get rid of that extra white space. And I'm going to hit Control Shift B and let's, or F10, I guess, and build and run this. And first of all, before I do that though, is this program going to work? Is this program actually solving the problem that we're trying to solve? If not, what are the issues with it? And how do we fix it? Pause the video. Think about it. Okay, let's do it. Control, Shift B. Ah, oh, syntax error. Why do we have syntax errors? What's the, what's the? Can you think of why we have syntax errors? Let me double click here and, oh, here's the syntax error. It's somewhere in there. What's the, what's the problem? Do you remember? Well, remember or recall that the multiply. Uh, instruction only takes a single argument because the first argument is implied and always implied to be EAX. Right? Now, let me just write this. I'm going to flop these. Okay, I'm going to switch this with this. So let me control X this, put this right here, put a comma, and there you go. Right? This is literally what the multiply is going to do, except the EAX is implied. So hopefully you remember that from the multiply instructions. So I'm going to take that away but if I take that away actually <laughs> is it really that simple can I just swap those two inputs alright this is the instruction as we originally had it can I literally just say hey cut this paste it over here but this part is implied so take it out will we get the same result pause the video think about it the answer is no because when we say multiply EBX that's going to store the result in EAX. All right, our our original instruction was, hey, store the result in EBX, not EAX. Store the result here. Oh, okay. Well, looks like the the easiest way to fix that. And again, EAX, we call it the A as accumulator register. We want A to accumulate here. So let's have it accumulate our powers. Right? It will go 3 and then 9 and 27 and 81. That's fine with me if it's fine with you. And if it's not fine with you, then, well, I'm sorry. We're going to do it anyway because we need to. So let's make the the base be EBX and the power EAX. All right, so that's going to change our initialization up here. EAX will be 1. EBX will be 3. And then now I can say multiply EBX. And that will um, basically change this power 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's like so. Well, that means we want to add EAX to our our total, which is ECX. Okay, does that make sense? I, I hope that makes sense. It's interesting with the Intel architecture at the like the multiply we're restricted we have to store the result of a multiply in EAX we have to consider that it's just not free form we can't just say store the answer wherever we want so there you go there's a little restriction of using assembly language and then again here compare EBX to 243 well that's that's not what we want to do we we want to uh, compare EBX not EBX anymore it's EAX EAX to 243 all right, Control Shift B. Oh, undefined symbol. Did I mistype? Yeah, I forgot. You you probably saw me do that. E. Now, let me teach you a hotkey. Actually, put your cursor here. Control T to transpose those two characters. All right, Control Shift B. We're building. We're good. Let's let's see if this gets what we want. Uh, the result we're looking for. Hit F11. Uh, we're get rid of this. Control Alt D. Bring up the disassembly. Uh, F11 into that. Sorry, there's kind of some meshing here. Let me pause the video and see if I can clean this up a little bit. Okay, I kind of shaved this column a little bit. Let's get our uh, registers up. So, I see debug, windows, registers right there. Okay, so here's our initialization. Let's EAX, you'll start out, our power will start out at 1, EBX. We'll start at 3, uh, which is our base. And then let's clean out ECX. Here's ECX. Lots of garbage in there. Watch it turn to 0 when I XOR. There we go. And then now I want to say we'll multiply EAX by EBX. So EAX is going to take on this first 3 right here. Okay, very good. And then add ECX, which is our total, which is 0 right now, that value 3. Good. 
Compare EAX to OF3, which is 243, our end condition down here. Uh, compare it, jump less than, let's do it again. Ah, I'm feeling good about this. I hope you are too. Multiply, now we're to 9. So this 9 is our 9 right here. Add ECX to EAX. So 9 plus 3 makes 12, which is a C. A C. And compare, jump less than again. I'm feeling good about this. You would wonder why it took me five days with my son to to solve this problem. But uh, actually, powers were new to him. Um, I think the most difficult thing about it was there was just so much new information. There was powers. There was uh, compares and looping and addition with powers. And, and to a child, that's, that's kind of difficult. But he got it. He got it. Uh, and he understands it. The, the main thing I want you to get, though, is, hey, this engineering approach is quite nice. Now, I got a little secret. All right, 3 to the 100 is going to overflow like crazy. All right, if you take 3 and times it by 3 and times it by 3, very quickly it will overflow beyond how uh, the largest value we can store. And I think in a future video I'll show you uh, how to detect that. But anyway, it doesn't, that, that doesn't really concern me. I just wanted a general solution here to solve the, the summation problem as we're doing. Um, one issue with it, though, and a little exercise for you, you probably figured this out already, but but if I wanted to go to 3 to 100, all right, say instead of 3 to the 5, I want to go to 3 to the 100, even though that will overflow insanely, and I can't actually store that in 64 bits. If you remember when we do a multiply, the result is stored in the EDX, EAX pair. Go watch the multiply videos if you need to refresh on that. But 64 bits is not large enough to store 3 to the 100. But if I could, what value would I have to stop? Right now we're stopping at 243, which is the 3 to the 5th value. Well, what value would I put here for 3 to the 100? Well, I can't put a value there. So what would I? What should I do instead? Um, I'll address that and a few other things in the next video.